guys welcome back to my channel the ink the reader today i am doing my january tbr uh, i have posted very recently a video explaining what's happening in 2022 so you can watch that for a more comprehensive idea of what's about to happen if it makes sense so i am gonna pick from behind me one of my shelves which i have numbered on my journal here it is so it's empty as of now because i'm gonna fill this in with the books i've already read or the books i will read um, and each shelf behind me is numbered some of the shelves are not in the frame but they are there i'm gonna show you close up once one comes up and i'm gonna randomly generate a number and the number that comes up i'm gonna check which shelf corresponds to and then i am gonna show your close up for that shelf and I will have to read all of the books that are unread on that specific shelf for the month. There are a couple of shelves that are empty so if those comes up I will either have to read one book in the main bedroom that's currently in the main bedroom or one ten books that are up above the proper bookshelf. So without further ado let's do it. I don't know how to do a video on my screen so I'm just gonna turn it around if it makes sense. So I have available 21 shelves in total so I'm gonna put in um, I'm going to show you random number generator. So I'm going to pick this random.org. Sorry, my screen is very much broken. Uh, I'm going to put one minimum and maximum is 21. And then I am going to click generate. And you actually saw it before me. And it's actually number five. So which shelf is number five? So we got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it's the fifth shelf from the top. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> it's happening, the beast, the beast. Let's, yeah, let's just start in style i guess for me i'm gonna insert a close-up there are a few rules um but i touched upon them in the other um video and let's see let's see what it's on the shelf so here is a close-up of the shelf i'm actually pretty much screwed as i've not read the majority of these books so we also have my two funk pop this is from Thor Ragnarok and this is the Italian art cover of Cinder by Marisa Meyer and then I've got Face Things which was part of a shell collection that Funko Pop did and I love her so much can we read the details so what has been read the coldest girl in cold town has been read so it can stay on my shelf but you, and of course I'm going to mess this up. It's okay, I'm going to rescue her. The two years, eight months and 28 nights. This is a book I received completely by mistake when I ordered another book or I think a book depository or word, I don't remember. And I've not read this one. Then we have Cold in July by Joe R. Lansdale. And I have already read this one years ago. And then we have Dean Kuhn's Intensity. And I have not read this one. And this is going to be my first Dean Kuhn's. Then, sorry, I feel very bad for her. Then we have The Midnight Star. Uh, I don't know, is this the first book in a series? No, this is the third book in a series. And I'm allowed to not read the book if it's part of a series where I'm not up to that point yet. So I am not up to this. I think this is the last book in the trilogy. So this stays behind. Uh, the Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zouet. This was a charity shop finding ages ago not read this one never read the david mitchell before heard amazing things about him so this is happening haha <laughs> i've not read northern lights by philip Pullman, so this is also happening and i have also not read this one uh but i will have to double check with you if it's the first book in the series if it's not i am maybe allowed to skip this we get back to you Beautiful Disaster. Yes, I've read this one, so I'm not. It's not happening. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, probably butchering. 
these and no i've not read these actually i've watched the movie but not read the book so it's happening bone crier's dawn uh this is a second book in a duology i believe and i had enjoyed the first one listened to it and then fairy loot came up with this special edition story plant and I've not read this one, so it's happening as well. And then I turned this around because, I mean, can we appreciate this? Right? But this beast, it's Dune. And no, I have not read this one. Uh, but to be honest, I heard amazing things about the movie. And I definitely want to give it a try. So I guess it's time. So then I can watch the movie. Cinder, uh, yes, I have read Cinder ages ago and I love this cover, Italian one. And I never actually found the matching covers for the rest, so that was disappointing. Um, whoa, 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 calm down. Uh, Unhinged, this is the second book in a series that I have read the first one, so I'm up to this point in the series and I need to read this one now. Half-Blood and I think this is also the first book in a series and I have not read this one and I will now read this one however there is an addition and I'll show you in a second uh, before I read this one but yeah this is the start of a new series that I also have not read this is a beautiful copy of A Thousand Nights this is actually the first book I have got on goodreads when goodreads was already still doing um giveaways in uk and bitch please can you resume that um but this is a stunning copy and i've already read this book so this doesn't go on my tbr i'm gonna i'm gonna fix this shelf it's just gonna stay like this for a month or so um under the pendulum sun this was a complete cover by understandably and I've not read this one, which I guess is the start of a new series. So yeah, it's happening. So these are my depleted, this is my depleted shelf. I had 17 books on this shelf and of that 17, I had read six. So I got 11 books to go through and they are massive. Will I make it? Who knows? We're about to find out, I guess. So that shelf is now <laughs> ruined for a month or so. Uh, and I had, as I said, 17 books on there and 11 were not read. Uh, and also there are no fantasy. None of these books belong to my fantasy TBR. So I will have to add another book to these. Yay! <laughs> um, okay, no, actually we have to add one and a half book. And I'm going to explain why in a second. So let's go through briefly the synopsis of these and I'll show you also the two books that I will have to add it's like one book and a half and they're both very short so that's not gonna be a massive problem can you see me regretting my life choices so I will have to add one from the fantasy TBR and usually I would use my random jar to pick one randomly but I have 11 some of them very big books to wait for me so I decided that this month if I have to pick an additional um, book for my TBR fantasy, I'm gonna be kind with myself and pick out a fable fantasy. And this is The Little Prince. And I consider this as a fable just because, first of all, it's kind of a children classic, but also like it reads, and I've already read this, so it's gonna be a reread, but I read this when I was a child, so I don't remember anything about this, but it does read like a fable and it's, it's whimsical and a lot of people love Little Prince and honestly I've read this but I could not remember anything and this is about very briefly it's illustrated first of all and it's got these plastic pages which I love so much and this is about this pilot that lands on this planet and by mistake I'm presuming and on this planet there is this Little Prince who's gonna tell him a lot of stories and this was written in 1943 if I'm not mistaken and it's it's a children classic and again, the fact that this little boy, little prince, is telling stories to the pilot that has just landed, it categorizes this as a fable fantasy, okay? He's telling fables, stories to his pilot. So this is, this is okay. Plus, can we, I don't remember which edition is this. Like, I don't remember when I got this, but it looks exactly like the illustrations are exactly like the ones I had when I was a child. So, yeah. So then we had The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I watched the movie, as I said, and really loved the movie. 
and I found this edition ages ago. I, I've owned this book and not read it for probably five years, if I'm not, maybe four. And this is basically the story of this guy. One day he wakes up, his house has been demolished, his best friend says, well, actually I'm an alien and Earth is about to be destroyed. So he has to leave Earth and go on a visit adventure. And it's a series from what I'm aware of. However, they never did other movies. Um, apart from the first one. So I'm gonna read these and if I like this, I'm gonna continue on with the series eventually. The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. Actually, I'm not gonna read because this is number four in the series and apparently you can read them as standalones. But when you go on Goodreads, then it says, you know, but you should read these after these and blah, blah, blah. So in order for me not to get confused, I'm gonna go in order and this is num book number four. So I'm not gonna read this. This goes back on the shelves. However, I'm gonna acquire the first book. It's my priority buying and it's gonna happen because fair is fair. Then, of course, I will have to read <laughs> Dune. And I don't know anything about this. This is, of course, it's a classic Wi-Fi. And everybody probably knows what this is about. I'm going to give a synopsis, though, when I do the wrap-up. I don't want to um, spend some time here. Just, you know, I think once is enough. But at least once, I will do it. And, I mean, the aesthetic of this book. This is a um, Waterstone exclusive edition. And this, by any chance, I think last time I checked, um, I acquired these like 10 days ago. They were still available, by the way. I'm not sure by the time you're watching this, so I'm hoping I won't be mean in saying that you can still find this book, but you should be able to still find this book. And I'm loving this so much. Hopefully I will love this and I will then proceed to watch my movie. And then I will say this, maybe we are banging on the book. Uh, I will proceed then to watch the movie. I have Bone, Cryer's Dawn, and this is actually a sequel to a book. The first book, but it's actually, yeah, it's signed because it's a fairly little exclusive edition. So you got like silvery pages. And I remember vaguely about the first book, but if I'm not mistaken, basically you've got this boy who is on a path of revenge because his father was killed by a witch. And these witches, they are hidden or like they are separate from normal society, they have these rituals, yearly rituals, or every few years, when basically they sacrifice a human, and I think it's their lover that they do have to sacrifice. So basically this boy is like, my father was killed by a witch, and now I'm gonna find witches and kill them all. And of course you've got a couple of witches which are friends, best friends, from the same clan of witches, they're about to have their first ritual for themselves and find their first mate, and they come across this boy who's not very happy with witches. And yeah, it's a bit confusing. I've heard bad things about the sequel overall. So I am a bit afraid. But it has to happen, right? It has to happen. And I'm not sure if it's a duology, but it might be just a duology. Then I've got Unhinged. And the, this is a retelling of Cinderella, you know, of Alice in Wonderland. Love this cover so much. And I've already read the first book, so I'm going to continue on. I don't exactly remember the ins and outs of the first book because I've read, read it ages ago but I did remember to liking it and to want to continue on and I think there is not a lot of triangle but kind of at the moment for what I can remember um, I think the Mad Hatter could be in potentially a lot of interest I don't know I will refresh my memory before going to these then I've got a very epic <laughs> fantasy series by Philip Pullman um, which is this is Northern Nights and I have Maybe you watched like 10 minutes, 15 minutes of the movie, the one that received trash reviews, and then I stopped um, for obvious reasons, I believe. And then I never actually got around to read this as a child. This is more for younger readers, I believe, but it's also a very popular series, and I want to give it a try, and I couldn't pass this cover up. And I believe this is about this girl that one day has to travel from Oxford with her demon uh, familiar, kind of to the North Pole, to the North, like it's cold where she's going basically. And she has to go there because one of her friends has been kidnapped. And yeah, I don't know anything else, but hopefully I will love these. Then I've got The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zouet. This is a historical fiction. And it's about this Dutch clerk that immigrates and goes and lives on an island near Nagasaki in Japan and basically back then it was an island that would connect Japan with the rest of the world and there is a lot going on there I don't know he's gonna find love potentially geisha or I don't know I, I don't know he's gonna fall in love though this is the guy who wrote um, Cloud Atlas which I watched the movie and it was it was too confusing for me so hopefully I will love this 
more i was a charity shop finding for like 50 pieces so i'm gonna give it a try sounds like it's a circle fiction that might be up to my alley that's why i kept it and i did it on hole i was very curious to read these and the reviews were kind of good so i'm gonna have a look there are some drawings inside i think this is not a drawing i can share nope 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 that's not not no that's very graphic um can i share these just a bit more i didn't know that i love when there are drawings inside then I've got Intensity. My is going to be my first Dean Kuntz book. And this is the story of this uh, serial killer. And this girl that basically she is trying to save her best friend. Uh, she knows that these guys kidnapped her and take her to his house. And she follows him basically to his mom's house to try and save her friend. And I think madness ensues. I think the review gives a bit of a spoiler at the beginning, which I don't even know if it's a spoiler, but I'm not going to say. So anyway, she goes, she becomes trapped in the house herself. And she has to save people from this serial killer. I've heard great things about Intensity and that's why I chose to pick this up as one of my first um, Dean Koons. I think I've got another couple of books by him in the other room, but I think this is a good starting point. And then I've got Two Years, Eight Months and 28 Nights. And this is, again, a book I received a mistake. So I had ordered another book and they sent me also this. And well, of course, I didn't complain. I didn't say anything. <laughs> I just kept the book and I yes I know okay I'm very honest person but if you send me a book by mistake you can bet your ass I'm gonna keep it um and all I know about this is that basically it's about this mortal that mates with a djinn and they have children and then these children they will go on and have children of their own and you know in time the magic of a djinn and the fact that these children were half human and half supernatural was kind of lost until one day you get to modern day i believe and all these children that now have you know gone all over the world and they have separated they not know each other like maybe generation after generation all of a sudden they start having some weird magic power and i guess there is also a war between light and darkness i don't know we will find out it sounds like it I could like this, so I'm gonna give it a try and I won't feel too bad if I'm not liking it and I have to go it away because I didn't pay anything for it. Then I've got Under the Pendulum Sun, which actually I just checked on Goodreads and it's a standalone fantasy. And it's about this girl, the brother disappears on a secret mission to the fairylands and she decides to go and find him and she becomes entrapped in the fairyland. And yeah, I guess she has to reunite with her brother, fight the fairies, there are probably court intrigues and so on. I love the core of this, I'm really hoping that I will love this so much. And yeah, I've not heard anybody talking about this. This was exclusively a cover, but I think once a year I just do it. I think I bought this last year where I was just like, I like that, it's five pounds on Amazon. I'm gonna get that, hopefully I won't regret it. And then the 0.5 book that I have, is actually Elixir. And this is a short novella that comes before Half-Blood. And Half Blood is the start of a new series by Jennifer L. Armentrout that I have read before and liked before. She writes usually fantasy, a lot heavy on romance, YA books. The series from Blood and Ash is going all over the place and it's by her. So it's the same author. And this book, I acquired the whole set of these books when I was just finishing Lux by her, which is another series that I really enjoyed back in the days and I love the covers of this so much so actually I these were from my mum for one my birthday or so and I got the whole series with these amazing covers I think the light is reflecting but these are self-published so no they're not but it's not like a major publisher I think Spencer Hill Press not sure anyway this is the story of these girl that goes to this school for half bloods and poor bloods now the difference between poor bloods and half bloods is that poor bloods are people that are descendant of sons and daughters of gods and humans so gods and humans mated they had children and if two half gods they would mate they would produce a uh, poor blood these kid children would be so powerful and like be at the top of the food chain basically but if a half god would mate again with a human then the result would be half bloods and they would be considered kind of scums so they go go to the same school i don't know why they decide that yeah let's put them together considering that they are absolutely prohibited from forming any relationship and i guess you have a half blood girl 
falling for a pure blood guy. Yeah, that's it. So, actually, with that, I didn't have to read The Murder of Roger, um, I have to read 10 books. Let me check count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3, 6, 9. 2,000 years later. It's 12 books, but it would be 10 from my shelf. Perfect. Like, I think 10 is an acceptable number. And then plus 2, but they're very short because of the fantasy TBR and because of the short novella that goes before the first book. That I, I want to go in order, basically. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you're gonna read in January. Happy New Year, guys. I'll see you in January 2022. Have a lovely end of the year. I hope you had nice holidays and I'll see you next year. Take care. Bye.